Well, hi everybody, welcome to my latest video. Does this PC look familiar? Well, this is the PC that I had bought from Newegg, which is a refurbished HP computer, an i5-2400 processor in it. Well, it's already been upgraded once. It has a new graphics card, a Gigabyte GTX 1030 graphics card to be specific, and added a couple of extra USB ports, 3.0, and we added memory. We actually bumped it up from the 4 gigabyte that it came with up to 12 by adding 8 more into it. Well, it's going to be upgraded again. It's new owner. We're going to use it from home for work, including a program called Revit, which basically does graphical type creations and has rendering to it. It doesn't run very fast on this PC. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to add more memory to it. I have another 8 gig of memory that's here. We're going to take out the 4 gig that's in there and we're going to go ahead and put this in which will bump it up to 16 and then we're going to replace the processor. We have an existing i5-2400 processor in there now. We went ahead and bought from eBay i7-2600 processor which is directly compatible, at least it's supposed to be, with that motherboard. In addition to the hardware upgrade, we're going to do some performance testing. So before I even start, we're going to test it to make sure that we understand how it handles performance, not only in terms of standard programs like Cinebench, we'll do that. And also with uh, M95 to make sure the heat and understand how that's being taken care of by this computer and its case. But we're also going to run the Revit program and do a test rendering of it, one that right now takes a long time, nearly two hours to render. So we're going to run that. We're going to run it before and after we do the upgrade of this. We're going to run all of that afterwards as well. Prime 95, Cinebench, and at least Revit. We'll see what else we want to try running. So hopefully, you get something out of this video, and you find it helpful in some way, and you at least consider subscribing to my channel. Also, hit the like button, too. Anyway, let's get started. Just the PC all opened up and ready to go. This is the CPU that I've already showed you. We'll be changing that out. And here are the two memory two more or big memory stick. I'll take out twos out of here, put these in, and we'll have a total of 16. Okay, so let's first see here. It looks like I'll have to pull this up a little bit. All these cables are in the air baffle. Take this out of here. It's not screwed down the air baffle in any way. I just have to push the wires aside, and it should just come right out. Okay. A couple of heat pipes on there. Like two heat pipes on that cooler. Not a very big cooler, but again, with an i5, I don't think the expectation is you need that much. But we've already taken the line with the i5 in terms of temperatures and performance. We'll then do a comparison of the cooling in particular, this heat sink. With that, looks like I can just remove it. I got my thermal paste, thick silver, which I like to use, all ready to go. Let's get this guy out of here. And a flat blade. It looks like it also can use like a Allen wrench. Try to take it off evenly a little bit. They're all out. Well, that thermal compound is non-existent. It really is dried out. So that may have affected the heat right there. Cleaning that before we put it back. In terms of the CPU, standard Intel type 1155 socket. It probably works the same. Let me pull this up, pull this back, and then here's the uh, CPU chip. Again, the pins be in the socket. See the triangle already? See the little triangle here up in the corner? CPU chip does not have any pins on it, just the little ends on it. That aside, this is all nice static, so I'll lay it down here. Take this CPU out. It looks like they got it uh, sealed in here somehow. Let me get a pair of scissors. Be able to easily close it back up again in case there's a problem. Being careful with the cutting. Okay, there's the triangle there. It's not a new CPU, it is used. We bought it from eBay, as I said earlier. Just have to line the triangle up. The triangle here in the corner, matching up the triangle on the CPU chip. Should be able to just lay it in there. 
Okay, and then I'll be able to close this back up again. So I gotta get the thing underneath there. There we go. Remember to get the CPU bracket underneath the screw that's there. Let's do that, okay? Let me get this underneath here. And like that. Okay, let me uh, go and get something to clean this off with. We got the good alcohol downstairs. Okay, so I went downstairs and got my 99% isopropyl alcohol. And I'll be cleaning the CPU chip now. Outside of it, now that it's in the socket. I didn't want to handle it too much, so this way it's in there. 99% alcohol, as we said in a previous video. It's the best way to deal with having something tronic cleaned because it will dry very quickly. A little bit of a polishing here, just to make sure. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure that I clean the bottom of the cooler. As you can see, that's pretty bad. You can't feel it, but it's completely dried out. They've never been changed since the thing was manufactured. Oh, it's taking forever to clean this off, too. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. I think at this point. It's pretty clean and polished. Okay, now that this is nice and clean, right, I will go ahead and put the thermal paste down. Got my Arctic Silver. Put a nice little bead in the center of it. That should be good. This. Place this down. It can't go either way. There's only one way it can go because of this notch in it. That's the notch for the air baffle cooler. Piece that'll go down into it here. This piece has to go into that notch. So it can't go either way. So that's the orientation. I okay, let's screw this down evenly. There we go. So the cooler is now back on. Before I put the air baffle back on, let me change the memory. As I recall, and I'll be able to find out in a moment, the memory that uh, is the lower end is in the white marks. Let me see if that's the case. Put one of these out. And what do we got? Oh, I guessed wrong. I'll have to try again. Let me, let me put this back where it was. I'm going to pull out the other ones. I'll pull out these two. So it's the black ones that I put the smaller memory. Let's double check this. Two gigabyte. So that's two gigabyte RAMs are coming out here. So I put those on the side over here. Take the new ones. The four gigabytes. This will have a total of 16, as I said in the intro. So it was tough to get out of those cases. Make sure that the notch is in the right place. The shorter end is at this end, it looks like. Make sure the tabs are open. Clicks on both sides. Take the next one. Make sure that notch is in the right place. Two clicks, and we should be good. Can I put the air baffle back in? Here's that tab I told you about. It has to go into this. We can also make sure it's on the front side of this fan. It has to sort of lock into the fan here. I push it down. It doesn't screw down, so I just have to put the wires back in here. Okay, so I think that's it. Okay, let me reset things with the monitor and make sure that this thing boots up. Okay, let's see if I power it on now and it picks up everything that we have on it properly. Cross our fingers on this. Oh, well, there we go. Memory size error. Well, that's expected because we changed the memory size. I have to hit F1 in order to boot it now, and it should then train the memory properly and hopefully come up into Windows. So let me hit F1. Well, that's a good sign. We've got the uh, Windows coming up, it looks like. Yeah, we do. Boy, these random backgrounds are interesting, aren't they? Let me log in. And there we go. Let's see now what it looks like in terms of uh, the system itself. I like to use the IPC. I right click on it and I pick properties. What do I have? Well, it says we have 16 gigabytes of memory. That's good to know. You say 16 gig 
and we have the Intel Core i7-2600 CPU 3.4 gigahertz. So it looks like it came up. Okay, let's look at the Task Manager and see what we see here. For performance, let's go to CPU. Okay, now we see eight cores. Okay, we're looking good now. So what I'll do now is do some testing on it, and we'll compare the results of what we got now to the results that we got previously. But I think it looks very good so far. I don't see any, uh, any problem with it. It's not using much CPU. It's using very little of the memory. It wasn't using that much before. So now we've got plenty of uh, leg room in that area. I'm not accessing the disk, really. And the Ethernet comes and goes depending on activity. GPU we're not exercising at all. So this is good. So let me go ahead and run some tests now. I won't show the test, but I'll show the results. Here are the results of the testing that was done in this system before and after the upgrade. The first set of numbers is with the i5, and the second set of numbers is with the i7 processor. In the first chart, we check the system power consumption from the utility, and we see an increase of 15%. In the second chart, we see Cinebench, the results of the score that Cinebench produces, and we see an increase in performance by 48%. In the third chart, we see the results of the heat test, and we see an increase in the heat output by about 14% with the i7. And in the final chart, which is the most important of them all, we can look at it two different ways. We see a 34% reduction in the execution time, or you can look at it as a 53% improvement in the performance of the system. Well, that worked out pretty well. This PC is a performer now. Um, the results are in. It's actually improved its actual processing power. I guess the extra cores, the extra threads that it has a lot, especially with the rendering product. But even with Cinebench, we're talking about something that's approximately 50% increase in processing power. We didn't see much improvement caused by the memory because we already had probably more than enough. I wanted to bump it up to 16 for future things because I understand that some of the work that she might do may actually require additional memory in order to work effectively. But we'll see how that goes. It'll, 16 gigabyte is something everybody should have anyway, in my opinion, as a minimum these days, at least for something that you're using for production purposes or gaming. So hopefully you got something out of this video and it was helpful in some way maybe you liked it a little bit. If you did, please do me a favor and please consider subscribing to my channel. My head will pop up here in a moment. Click on it, follow along. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, really. You can, if you'd like, click on the little bell and get alerts. I'm not asking you to do that. If you just subscribe for now, that would help this channel grow and I can continue to provide future videos that could help everybody. Well, thanks for watching and until the next time, take care.